I want to talk today about Black women, bullying in the workforce, and mental health. This woman, Dr. Antoinette Candia Bailey, she was the Vice President of Student Affairs at Lincoln University, Missouri, and she took her own life. And she had reported that it was because of workplace bullying by the president of that university, President Mosley. Dr. Kendia Bailey actually sent emails out and she did talk to friends before she took her own life. I'm going to just play the video that is attached to this article. Lauren Terman reports new documentation from Bailey herself identifies Lincoln as, quote, where it started and where it ended. The passing of Lincoln University Vice President of Student Affairs, Dr. Antoinette Bonnie Candia Bailey, has rocked both Jefferson City and University alums. Now new documents are surfacing from Bailey herself on the day she took her own life, outlining University President Dr. John Mosley as causing, quote, enough harm and mental damage. That whole day, I was really beating myself up because I'm like, if I would have read the entire email, Maybe I could have saved her life. Candia Bailey graduated from Lincoln in 1998. Her friends and loved ones say she was a loving, generous person who radiated positivity. She's the type of friend where, you know, she can just tell by talking to you in your voice that something's wrong. And she would get up in the middle of the night and she would drive two, three hours to get to you, to be there for you. It did not matter what she was going through. She always smiled. She was always positive. But soon after she took the position of vice president of student affairs in May of 2023, her friends noticed a change in her. I came to visit with her on homecoming, and she was like, you know, she's like, I'm just trying to make it through at this point, because that is when she was getting depressed. It's like her whole demeanor had changed. Yes, she was smiling and all that, but you could still tell something was off, something was different. Multiple emails obtained by a friend of Candia Bailey and shared with KRCG shows she sent emails to Mosley and to the Board of Curators outlining Candia Bailey's request for family and medical leave, saying that the relationship between her and Mosley went downhill due to her severe depression and anxiety. Additional emails reveal that when she made complaints about how she was treated to HR and the board of curators the board president wrote a response back to her saying in part please be advised the board of curators does not engage in the management of personnel issues for lincoln university and will not be taking further action related to this issue chapter three of the board of curators bylaws that have been in effect since march 30th of 2023 covers operational guidelines for personnel the section of bylaws is unclear whether the board can take on any personnel or HR issues outside of hiring in certain circumstances. Those emails also showed Candia Bailey believed she was intentionally harassed and bullied and claimed she received a poor evaluation when she asked for help. Monica Graham says the last time they spoke was just hours before Candia Bailey passed. I screamed. I was in denial. I'm like, no, you have to be mistaken because I just talked to her. I just got an email from her this morning. So I immediately started trying to call her. And of course, there was no answer. So when it was confirmed that it was really true, it was really bad for me. I passed out. I ended up at the doctor. Now this video is being made to spread awareness, to hold Mosley accountable for his actions, and specifically to call for the immediate removal from this position at our beloved HBCU. Graham, Hill, and many other LU alumni around the country are leading a charge on social media to have Mosley fired as the president of Lincoln and created a hashtag fire Mosley. Leaders of this call to action say they hope Candia Bailey's story will serve as an unfortunate lesson for the president, administration, and board of curators. Offer therapy to people. Let people know that therapy is okay. It is okay to have a therapist. It is okay to be strong and still have problems. In her final email to Mosley on the day of her death, Candia Bailey also asked for only select members of her sorority to be allowed to collect her things, saying, Roseanne can speak with my family from the administration. You are not to have any contact. You've caused enough 
of harm and mental damage. KRCG has reached out to the administration at Lincoln University, and they have declined to comment at this time. Following a protest on Thursday, the Board of Curators called a meeting for Friday at 3 p.m. with a partially open session agenda. Another protest is set for next Tuesday at noon. It has been a controversial start to the year for Lincoln University President. I just want to come and say to all of my Facebook friends, real life friends, associates, if you are struggling with anything, talk to somebody. Don't suffer in silence from someone who was once severely depressed. I understand suicidal thoughts. I've told this story many times. Please don't judge people that commit suicide. You have no idea what they're going through, their mindset. They're not selfish, they're not. They're in a pain that you or no one else can understand. And when you're in that type of pain, it takes over your mind and you do the unexpected. Give these people grace, show love. Don't allow your job to take over your life. Don't do it. I was at a job, a very high paying job that had me so stressed out that my whole entire left side went numb. Said this job is not gonna kill me. I walked away from it. If you have a job that has that type of stress in your life, walk the fuck away. It ain't worth it. Talk to somebody. Talk to somebody. Don't, don't suffer in silence, please. And quit judging people for what they're going through because you have no idea you have no idea. Depression is real. And so many people suffer from it. And they don't talk about it. And if I didn't have an angel in my life during that year of me being severely depressed, I might not even be here. It's real. I've had suicidal thoughts. But my angel pulled me out of it. Because I opened up. Don't let that be you. There has been a lot of pushback um, with DEI initiatives, the diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives. Um, there's always been backlash about affirmative action because sometimes being um, a minority or a woman in the workforce, you get extra, um, like people looking at you, extra scrutiny. But that can definitely impact, all of that can impact your mental well-being, even if you are qualified for the job. This article is from the Harvard Business um, Review, the psychological toll of being the only woman of color at work, but also being a high profile woman of color at work, being a high profile hire at work. This is all, you know, this all works pretty much the same. Okay, so let me read some of this. She said, the first time I was seriously bullied at work, I convinced myself it was no big deal. As the first woman in my family to graduate from a four-year college, I thought I could handle anything, but my body knew something was wrong. My heart would be faster when the elevator was about to open up to my office's floor. I'd have trouble getting out of bed in the morning, despite being an early riser my whole life. I stopped wanting to socialize with friends, despite being an extrovert. Most of the time, I was just too exhausted to go anywhere. Exhaustion can definitely be a sign of your mental health declining. Then the dark thoughts showed up, uncalled for. No one can see me here anyway. I kept thinking I would replace scenarios in my head from interactions with coworkers. Initially, I would feel shame for not knowing how to respond to subtle acts of exclusion, also known as microaggressions, like having my name mispronounced mispronou mispronou in my English, complimented as well as being the only woman of color in my department 
but I soon felt self-loathing and anxiety when I was at risk of being fired after a <clears throat> after a senior leader made a complaint about how I was difficult to work with without giving any reasons or examples to back it up. One thing about being a black woman in the workforce is that we are typically seen as angry or strong-headed or argumentative for racialized stereotypical purposes. And anytime we have anything to say, it can be misconstrued because of stereotypes. Having no women of color to turn to, I felt like I was living in an alternative reality. Today, I know there's a word for what I experienced, racial gaslighting. But back then, I questioned myself literally every day. Eventually, the burden became too much to bear. I could see myself turning into a cynical, bitter shell of myself. I saw up close how the rules were different from my white peers, the white men and women who got promoted despite underperforming, the male leaders who only hired attractive white women. I was left out of meetings, social gatherings, and inside jokes, and I never saw anyone who looked like me. It took a toll, not just the bullying, but the, uh, the daily acts of exclusion. Eventually, I quit despite advice from my uh, family and friends that I shouldn't leave such a lucrative opportunity, but I was broken mentally and spiritually. It's common for victims of workplace discrimination to conceptualize how they are the problem. That conceptualization takes the form of guilt and shame, severe anxiety, and panic and worry such that you can no longer be effective in your role, says Danielle Jenkins, Henry, um, I'm sorry, says Danielle Jenkins Henry, licensed marriage, family therapist, associate, and founder of Dream Life Out Loud, a psychotherapy practice for Black women. So what can you do? Women of color facing workplace bias and discrimination must take care of their mental health. First and foremost, know and understand that you can leave. These jobs don't care about you. Don't stick around at some place that is making your mental and physical um, health decline. This says, no, you can leave. You don't have to keep going in there and taking abuse. Jenkins Henry says, many women of color feel like they have to go in there and fight, especially if they're the first in their family to have a corporate career. Absolutely not. Take care of your mental health first. Microaggressions and bias absolutely do impact. Number two, find adaptive coping strategies. Jenkins Henry notes that often, even while facing bias or discrimination, her clients may not be able to leave for financial reasons, or they need to stay on a while being put up for promotion or to wait for stocks or benefits to invest. So I always tell my clients, we need adaptive coping strategies for them to be able to continue to show up and do their job if that is what they wanna do. These include meditation practices or other strategies to ensure they're getting enough rest, eating, and exercising. Building internal reserves is the key to navigating external challenges of bias um, in workplaces for women of color. Find a support network. Jenkins Henry encourage, encourages women of color to reflect on who's in their support network. Is it a church organization, a sorority, or a fraternity? a network of colleagues, perhaps an employee resource group. Identify who can support you, who is aware of what is happening and where you can go so you don't feel so isolated. Plan your exit strategy. Some of the que questions women of color should ask themselves, is, the right time, um, is it the right time to leave? Should I be making a plan B? Am I suffering so much that it's time to leave right now? If women of color need to leave immediately, Jenkins Henry advises them to consider options like filing for medical leave, or seeking a clinical diagnosis. Other exit strategies could be finding a new role within or outside the company or taking a break like a sabbatical. If you are going through something, understand that you are replaceable. As soon as you're not there, those companies are going to replace you. Do not allow them to suck the life out of you. Don't forget to like, comment, and share and support women when we're going through something and someone reaches out to you. You never know if you're that last ditch effort to like help someone in their mental health decline.